Coxiella burnettii is a gram-negative rod that causes a condition called Q fever. This bacterium is highly resistant to environmental stressors, including high temperatures and ultraviolet light, and spreads to human from animals like cows, sheep, and goats. So Q fever is considered a zoonotic infection. Now, Coxiella burnettii is considered a gram-negative obligate intracellular organism. So it can only replicate inside other cells, like our macrophages. C. burnettii is also non-modal and has a biphasic life cycle that consists of an environmentally stable, non-replicating form called small cell variant, or SCV for short, and a metabolically active, replicating large cell variant, or LCV. When it feels threatened by the environment, like when the temperature becomes too high or too low, in case of extreme dryness, or when there's harmful radiation around, C. burnettii transforms into the SCV by shrinking and condensing its DNA and periplasmic space. In this form, it's able to resist heat, harsh chemicals, digestive enzymes, and even antibiotics. Remarkably, the SCV can survive for years, waiting for favorable conditions to come and then convert into the LCV that can then grow and divide inside host cells. Enjoying our Osmosis videos? Unlock your full potential with an Osmosis subscription. Get unlimited access to every Osmosis feature and resource with a free seven day trial. Now, the primary disease that Coxiella burnettii causes is called Q fever. This disease is most commonly acquired by inhalation of aerosolized C. burnettii from an infected animal. Infection can happen during parturition, when large amounts of bacteria are released in birth fluids, or from dust contaminated by animal excrement, such as when cleaning a barn. It can also be picked up through ingestion of raw milk or other unpasteurized dairy products, or by contact with contaminated animal materials. So, people at highest risk for infection include those in close contact with farm animals such as farmers and veterinarians, and also slaughterhouse workers. In terms of pathogenesis, the exact mechanism of disease is poorly understood. What is known is that the small cell variant is highly infectious, and once it enters the body, it attaches to receptors on phagocytes, like macrophages in the lung. Now, normally, phagocytes destroy invading bacteria via endocytosis, which is when bacteria are engulfed by the phagocyte and wrapped in a vesicle called a phagosome. The phagosome normally merges with an acidic intracellular organelle called a lysosome, forming a phagolysosome. Lysosomes release hydrolytic enzymes inside the phagolysosome, which normally destroy the invading bacteria. But here's the thing. C. burnettii is unusual because, instead of being destroyed, it can modulate the process, allowing it to survive and even replicate in the acidic phagolysosome. The acidic environment triggers transformation of the SCV to the replicating LCV, and within 24 to 48 hours, the phagolysosome can be filled with replicating LCV forms. How C. burnettii both avoids destruction by the host's immune system and replicates so efficiently are still not fully understood. This ability to survive and replicate inside macrophages allows it to travel through the bloodstream to infect multiple organs, such as the heart, especially the valves, liver, central nervous system, lymph nodes, and others. Now, clinical manifestations of C. burnettii infection can be divided into acute and chronic Q fever. Acute Q fever takes two to three weeks to develop after exposure and can present with nonspecific flu-like symptoms, such as high fevers, chills, fatigue, and muscle aches. Infection can also show up as an atypical pneumonia characterized by non-productive cough and pleuritic chest pain, as well as nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea. Other presentations include hepatitis and less commonly meningoencephalitis. It's important to keep in mind, though, that acute Q fever can often be asymptomatic, leaving a person with no symptoms at all. 
On the other hand, chronic Q fever takes months to years to develop and is most classically associated with C. brunettii endocarditis, an infection of the inner lining of the heart that often involves the heart valves. People with prosthetic or damaged valves are at especially high risk. The diagnosis of Q fever is tricky because the disease presents with nonspecific signs and symptoms, so it may not be obvious to test for C. brunettii. General laboratory studies usually demonstrate an elevated white blood cell count, elevated inflammatory markers like ESR or CRP, and elevated liver enzymes if the bacteria invade the liver. Q fever should be suspected in patients with a history of frequent contact with animals, like cattle, sheep, or goats, and subsequent development of compatible symptoms. Serologic testing is the preferred method for diagnosis. Coxiella burnettii expresses two types of antigens, called phase 1 and phase 2 antigens, which lead to antibody production in the body. Detection of these specific antibodies using indirect immunofluorescence assay, or IFA, or enzyme immunoassay, also known as EIA or ELISA, can be used to confirm infection with C. burnettii. Polymerase chain reaction, or PCR, is another test that can be done which will directly identify bacterial DNA. Treatment of acute Q fever is with doxycycline for 14 days for most patients. On the flip side, chronic Q fever requires longer-term management with a combination of drugs, such as doxycycline and hydroxychloroquine, for at least 18 months, as well as serologic testing to monitor treatment response. All right, as a quick recap. Coxiella burnettii is a small, pleomorphic, gram-negative rod that is an obligate intracellular bacterium. It causes a zoonotic infection that is transmitted primarily via aerosols, and people at highest risk are individuals in contact with farm animals. The primary condition that Coxiella burnettii causes is Q fever, which can be further divided into acute and chronic Q fever. Acute Q fever can be asymptomatic or associated with nonspecific flu-like symptoms such as fever, fatigue, and muscle aches. Serologic testing is the primary method of diagnosis, with PCR also used in some cases. Treatment of acute Q fever involves a course of doxycycline. On the other hand, chronic Q fever is most classically associated with infective endocarditis. The treatment here includes a combination of doxycycline and hydroxychloroquine for at least 18 months. Helping current and future clinicians focus, learn, retain, and thrive. Learn more 